Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the round of 32 game one match between Go Go Bay and Jimmy Fantastic, both with Dark Elves. Um, this was casted live on my channel, but it was not the official cast, it was with my casting crew, so I'm going to do the replay of this as if it was a normal game as well. And I can tell you that Go Go Bay is Canadian, qualified through Goblin World Championship qualifier. He won his group. I was runner up in mine. Um, I'm obviously from Great Britain and qualified through the Super League, the Blood Bowl Super League, which, you know, it was my competition. Now, it had a lot of good players in it. It was not an easy field whatsoever. We had seven people who qualified, no, eight people, I think, who qualified for the World Cup. Yeah, eight people who qualified for the World Cup were in Super League and seven people in the round of 32 from Super League. So, you know, it's a very, very, uh, very high quality league. Very difficult to win. Um, Dave, or funnily enough, won it one of the seasons after I won it. Um, so, yeah, it's re you know, it was, it was not a soft way to qualify. Let me 100% clarify that. It was not me winning versus my friends or anything. It was, it was a super tough competition. And uh, yep, so I won the toss and chose to receive, I imagine. Um, we've both got Dark Elves. Funnily enough, this is funny, a hilarious aside. Um, Seabros won one season of Super League and he had this exact roster. No, he didn't. I'm lying. This is the Christopher Bengston build. A complete lie. Disregard that. Complete lie. This is the Christopher Bengston build where he has dropped a witch elf to give an extra reroll um, over the Sea Rose build. So it's similar to the Sea Rose build, but it's not the Sea Rose build. It's only similar. But he has only got one witch, which, which is a bit... I considered using this, honestly, and I would consider using this in tabletop. I think having three rerolls is really good. Really good. I hate having two. And I think the Apo is better without overtime. Um, but seeing as these games could have overtime and draws could be acceptable, I felt more players and, uh, you know, like it's a kind of safer, right? Like all of my blitzes are blodge and my witch elves are both rot, well, blodge or rodge. So, like, I've got more defense than if I had an assassin with just dodge. So, I've, I've gone for the more defensive team, 12 players. So, I'm, I'm really like, you know, kind of safe as possible on that. Of course, two rerolls is a bit dodgy. So, um, I'm probably talking too much here, but of course it's my team, so I'm going to talk a bit more, aren't I? I, I? Did I blitz with the Witch Elf here? I didn't blitz with the Witch Elf. I did think about blitzing the Witch Elf, just so I could run her back so she wouldn't get stabbed. Wasn't a great fan of maybe getting her stabbed here. But then I, I guess I decided I could protect her with the... Should have moved this first, I guess. But no, I didn't want to see how the LOS went. So I think I protected with a blitzer here, so it makes it a little bit harder to stab her. I mean, not really. Because <laughs> he still goes in and stabs, but he can't protect the stabber very well, right? He can't protect the stabber as well if he goes for the stab. Get a, get a stun there. That's epic, isn't it? Also, let me just say... Let me just say the best painted team in the World Cup. Maybe. Love this team, red and white. I always do a circle of it in the live games. I've got the halfling cheerleaders. I've got the halfling sideline stuff. I've got Lord Borak. Oh, brilliant stuff. Uh, go, go, bear. Had default things. Sad. And a nice purple though. Thank you. Honestly, I'm really happy with it. And I'll be getting a tabletop team looking like this in the future hopefully so i'm excited about that so um go go bay just two plus dodging off a couple of stuns was a decent turn wasn't it so here's an interesting thing isn't it this is an early because he's remained quite narrow because he's so narrow i can go down the sideline a little bit and he can't like threaten to surf on me right so Getting this line of four players, I quite like it, you know. Yes, so I'm kind of threatening this guy a little bit. You know, he might just want to dodge him off. And, because he can't really hit this guy, because I'm going to have things in front here. So he can could, he could hit this guy, and that's not really getting him a hit there too much. 
So I quite like this, getting a bit of penetration and a bit of uh, punching. So yeah, I really quite like this. I, <laughs> looks stupid, doesn't it? A big conga line. But I thought this wasn't too easy to deal with. And he goes very deep at this point. Look at this. I feel like he should have been, you know, had his, kept his team here. But he doesn't. He falls back. A little bit deeper. Covers that sideline. Covers the sideline. When he probably should have covered the middle, right? So I'm like, oh, thank you. Let me take, let me take the centre here. Let me just take this centre real quick. Super safe, right? Venger bussing it because he's got an assassin that can just dodge in and stab me. I'm quite worried about the stab throughout this this whole half um, because he can just he can just dodge in and stab my ball, right? So I have to be quite protective of my of my cage. I think protecting the witch elves now from the stabs as well. So he still keeps, he still goes back even further here. He doesn't need to give me this square and he just gives me an extra square. Just gave me an extra square for free there. So I will, I'm like, well, thank you very much. I will take that square. Now, you know, what I should have done here was I should have done the diagonal blitz to keep him based on a knockdown, but I want to try and be as completely safe as possible. <laughs> Absolute mega giga safe. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, got these guys, you know, got to keep these guys out as a threat for the sideline. He's got to keep the sideline guarded with having these two fellas here. And again, absolutely as much as I can to stop this, this assassin coming in and stabbing my ball. You know, now he's he's got us like cage on this line, so this is about as far forward as he as he can be now. This is a little bit far. so turn five. I could have gone around here a little bit because he's only got one witch elf, so I could have shuffled over to this side a little bit, blitz this guy maybe. Maybe I should have done that, but I thought I'm just going to try and like just jam it down the middle here. It's kind of a bit safer. It felt safer to just jam it down the middle. Just take my square. I'm thinking now I'm so close I can just take a square each turn, right? So I kind of, I don't hate just taking the square here. And then, you know, he's got to give me another square next turn. And, you know, I'm just thinking like that. I've got a strong threat on this side, right? He's, he's, he's actually got to defend this side quite strongly, which he is doing. So again, right now there's a, there's a, there's another strong strong argument for getting one or two blitzers around here, trying to get one or two round blitzers around the side. Um, the problem is I've got to then blitz a blodge player, probably not going to knock him down. Could have got somebody around there. I probably should have done, but uh, you know I'm just really trying to just be as completely mega safe, mega bunker, and I really like that these two are like making and protect around there. But yeah, I guess I could have gone a little bit less safe. And, uh... Actually swung away from there. I was hoping he would make this even weaker. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking if I go over this side, he might make this side even weaker, right? And then I can swing back. So that's why I've got the cage out here. With this stuff here, right? So I can swing back next turn. So I'm really looking at a big swing over there next turn. Potentially. So this was this is my weakest turn in, in in terms of the assassin right Could have, again i still got the witch elves at the back so you can't stab the witches ever.
And he actually does a really good turn there, I think. I think this is like... I was annoyed because it was turn seven, right? And I was like, this is actually a really good turn. He somehow got absolutely enough to cover everywhere. And I was a little bit annoyed, to tell you the truth. I was really hoping he'd like leave me the cut back here stronger than he did. He could have maybe been a square closer there. But I did think he played a good turn six. And now I've finally got something around. But yeah, so I, th I think I was a bit too timid, honestly. I think I was a bit too timid. I probably should have got somebody, you know, around the side earlier. Or just one player there on turn seven. I probably should have got something through earlier. Yeah. So not, not a perfect drive, but I mean, I was being super careful, right? I was managing to protect the Witch Elves and the ball from stabs on basically every turn. So I was pretty happy. Pretty happy with how safe it was. But, you know, looking back, this is a lot of two pluses I've got to make on this last turn. On here, I did think of a little bit around here, like there was a chance of maybe he's going around the side there somehow, but this is, I think, okay solution. It's not the, it's, well, it's probably the best. Of, again, he played quite well. Like you know, he he did get in the way very well here. Four two plus is an insane amount here. Get the surf, obviously no damage. And assist there, just need to push here. Push the pal's no different. And then it might is it might have been five, right? Hand off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So Yeah, it was actually five two pluses. Five two pluses. I didn't I didn't Pack the handoff, right? I could have packed the handoff as well. I didn't. There were four players here that could have been stood around the ball for a bubble box. I didn't do that. Pop dodge on the first dodge. Um, so I had three two pluses with two rerolls. And uh, was able to get them. So that was... It was all, you know, it, I can see it looking a bit boring on the replay, but it, it was like, you know, there was kind of like vague probing and fainting trying to go on. And I honestly, I, I thought he did a good job of not letting me get through. Like I was hoping to pile through bigger that like, you know, I could have gone for a smaller breakthrough on some of the earlier turns, but I was hoping that he'd make a mistake and I'd get a big push through. So, I, so but because he'd given me so much ground early, I was kind of okay with just uh, with just inching forward and hoping for a big breakthrough. Um, but may maybe I should have tried how to get a smaller breakthrough. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of hedgehogs having sex is is ungodly. Apparently, uh, there's a there's a story by the big comedian, the big British comedian from In Between Us. I can't remember his name, and he he does an impression of the sound of hedgehogs having sex because he's heard them, and uh, it sounds it sounds horrendous. So there you go. He, he didn't set off the one turn right; it's just uh, punching things and maybe a bit of riot. The one turn's really hard with dark elves. Sounds demonic. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> there you go. So no damage on either side either. You'll notice this is uh, game four of my tournament. I have still yet to make a Kaz. But I didn't take any, so that's all right. So now, in the second half, his Apo is definitely better than my reserve, right? Because now he can Apo an early KO or any KO and I can't. My, my reserve is rubbish. It's a constant struggle to know which is better between the, re the reserve and the apple. I did explain. Uh, probably is at the start of this video, but you know, at the end of the day, I think with overtime and being able to draw, I like the reserve. For NAF Swiss style, I would definitely take an apple. 
you know, so that you can win drives. More important to like win a drive, right? Get the turnover drive and stuff, and and or you know, get the stop and like win. Like I can win one nil here, right? I don't have to. I don't have to turn him over. I can. I can hopefully just hold the line and win one nil. Thank God, only a stun. I know there were some. There were some. There was. There was. There were times when the reserve was better. To be fair. Um, but yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's a really tough call, but that was the reason that I that I did do the call. I thought the overtime making a difference. I just I just uh, rule the five so that he couldn't uh, couldn't surf anybody with his witch. Maybe I should like, and I didn't really like the rule of four so much because I didn't want him to stab one of the four blitzers. So here we go, straight out. Doing the screen, safe moves first. The pow is lovely. That lets us push. I was going to push the assassin back, but then obviously getting the knockdown lets us get these guys out without having to dodge. Pretty strong. <laughs> um, that'll have been in game two, right? BC didn't do the commentary for game one. Um, yeah, I, I'd agree with him in a NAF yeah. Swiss event where you have to win. I, I would go double wrestle there. The reserve encourages the optical positionals, maybe. Uh, also, the reserve lets you foul, right? Versus Wood Elves and stuff. The reserve lets you foul a war dancer. You can't do that if you've got an apple. So. That that was a subtle, an added subtlety was being able to foul war dancers. <laughs> yes, eh, Dev. I mean, it it the block which got got um got Sol for Kaz versus Orcs. So you know it works sometimes. So, you know, a bit of shuffling around. Maybe I should have shuffled before the Blitz. I don't know. And then a little bit of a crucial 2 plus there, right? If I fail that, he could have gone through there. But it's still early to go through, so I didn't care too much. I, w I wouldn't have re-rolled it, I don't think. So again, he's just trying to get something, isn't he? Just shuffling around. We're both shuffling and shuffling. Lots of shuffling. <laughs> Get the power, which saves us a dodge. In fact, I might not stand that guy up at all. That must die. That completely shuts down the sideline, doesn't it? The extra guy. <laughs> so he could try for a 3 2 through there, couldn't he? But he actually stopped moving with a blitzer. Could have tried a 3 2 there. A 3 2 true. So this is, this is the critical turn now. This is the critical turn. He's based up a fair amount, right? My turn 13. This is the critical turn. Now, he's given me a surf here, right? And I can put an assist in and I can 2-2-2 two, two, two and surf him. And honestly, what I should have thought about was what else am I going to do first? And I should have thought about the actual final position of everybody, right? I should have thought of the final position of everybody and realised I couldn't afford to put this guy in. But instead I was like, surf! <laughs> and just instantly blocked. Uh, instantly put the assist in and blocked. And powed. Actually, what, so I, I could have still saved it. I could have, could have still probably saved it. But again, I didn't really... I didn't really think that that turn, I'll be honest, I did not think that turn. 
and then if you're watching this live there's a huge stall here this, I went like I went about four minutes in a time bank here because I'm like oh god how the hell do I do this and maybe this witch elf should have been one further over now that I'm looking at it now I think I'd probably run out of movement on her did I one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'd run out of movement. So if I had not done that, I could have had this witch elf here or here, and then I could have still covered it. So I still made a mistake. This witch elf's here, then this witch elf is there, and then, then I can have a line here. So I could have still fixed it, but instead I didn't. We see an obvious weakness, and he attacks it instantly. Probably should have followed so he could dodge away, right? Get an extra square deeper. This isn't easy for him, right? This is a bunch of dice. He's also blocked the dodge off with this guy, so he couldn't he can't cut the corner there. And yeah, this is his turn 14, so like this is a really good time to overcommit, right? Like this is a horrific overcommitment for him, right? On turn if this was turn twelve, then I'm shutting him down or I'm making him score early. But because it's turn 14, this is fine to make such a such a commitment. So yeah, tough. Maybe maybe I've missed something here as well. But I could have surfed this guy, couldn't I? I um, I just think I'll try and I'll just think I can try and screen it right. I'll try and screen deep, and then hopefully I can screen the last turn. That's what I was thinking. And then, funny enough, I just put this guy down. I oh, know this guy. It's fine here. I put a guy down somewhere without really thinking too much about it. Like this is all pretty good. And this guy I just didn't think and I just put him down there and that that's a mistake, right? Like this what's this guy doing here? I guess he's stopping nothing. It was the last player that I moved as well. He should have been up, right? He should have been like up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He should have been up here or here. I guess I was making another screen there, but I've I've got two players here. I don't need this bit, this part screen, do I? I need him up here. So this is pretty bad. This is honestly, this is a mistake. This, this guy's doing nothing. He needs to be up here, stopping something happening. But it's not a bad formation. It's not a bad formation, but, you know, he should have been further up. Because, I mean, he's so, he's so tight on the side, right? Like, and I've got this so locked down. This guy needs to be locking it down more or not. Hoping to be a reserve in case something yeah. happens. Because he can just run through for free now, right? He can knock this guy over and he can run through completely for free. Whereas if this guy was like out here or here, then he's got to use his blitz to get through there and not there. So yeah, I, I this was a big mistake. This guy just did nothing. That was really bad. Really bad of Jim. Double rush though. For go, go, beer. He hasn't used any rerolls until now. And he can leave this corner open because he got the stun there, <laughs> which was pretty lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> So yeah, definite mistake for me there. That, that should be bad. I'll power this guy. My plan here is hoping he makes a mistake with shadowing, right? And I hope that he shadows to here. And he shadows to here. Oh god, I, okay, right, look. So I'm thinking... We, I can't, I can't actually show you. That's so annoying. So, so when he followed, right, so I'm thinking, hopefully he'll make a mistake in Shadow. And he did Shadow. He did Shadow on the second dodge to there. But then I snaked the dodge. 
So if he if he had shadowed out to here, then all of a sudden, I've just got an easy hit on the ball, and uh, it'd have been like a four plus in for two D and a two D with a witch, and then. He did make the mistake of shadowing, I think, of trying to shadow. He made the mistake of trying to shadow, but then he successfully shadowed. And then I rolled a snake. <laughs> and then this would have just been a 2 plus in. 2 plus in for a 2D and a 2D. I think I, think I had to go for the ball sack because... I, you know, I wasn't going to screen then. He'd, he'd got too far away, so I, I didn't protect him for side switching up. I just put this guy down the end of doing nothing. Should have, should have really, should have really, really, I really did that wrong. Deserved to concede this touchdown. So there you go. He did a frivolous block at the end, but it doesn't matter, does it? 1 1. Got the chance of one turn. Still got both my rerolls for the one turn. So there's a chance for this one turn. Not a lot of chance, admittedly. But because I've got two re-rolls and he's got this set up, I'm definitely going to try and just uh, push the witch out the end. Now what happened here is, this guy's out of range of the pickup. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's, he's kind of out of range of anywhere. So I moved him in there. And then he did... Now I think he should... I think I've made a mistake here. I think this guy should have been the one who did that. But he hasn't got dodge, right? So actually, I probably should have just had the dodge player on the LOS. And I should have had the move the, the movement six guy back. You know, I liked having the movement seven guy to do the pickup. But actually, I should have had the dodge. And if I'd had the dodge player on the LOS, then he would have been there to do it. And funny enough, I rolled a one on the dodge. So, um, so it was good that I did with the dodge. But I might have used too many players here. I'm not sure whether I used too many players at this point. Um, so go for the push, push here. Roll a pow. And re-roll into another pow. So that, that failed for one turn. Um, but the idea would then have been this guy pushes him to there. This guy pushes him to there. Um, then need this one filled. We need this one filled. So this guy... <laughs> this guy goes up here and this guy this guy got a block so it would be this one would have to do the last fill which is one two three four five six rush rush couldn't reach so I did I did mess it up I had to have done the pick up handoff with this guy and then this would have been this blitzer who'd have gone one two three four five six seven rushed there so I did mess it up he should have rushed to there he would have gone there and then I would have blocked it into there, blocked him into there, and then blocked him forward twice. So I did mess it up. It did have to be this guy that did the pick-up handoff and ended up there. So there you go. If you could follow all that, fair play to you. I did mess it up um, because it should have been this one. But, you know, overall, I thought it was a kind of decent one-turn attempt. Um, not terrible, not terrible, but... The problem is, it's so hard, right? A movement 7 one turn is so difficult that I don't feel too bad. But yeah, I did mess it up. So there you go. That was game one, a 1-1 one -one draw. Um, yeah, I thought I thought we both played well. There wasn't really much given away by either side. And uh, what was given away, we both took advantage of. So there you go. GG, Golga Bay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.